Hillary Clinton's health scandal is still unfolding, but to understand the conflicting and ever more unlikely stories that we're starting to see and hear, it's useful to recognize and understand the pattern that Hillary and Bill Clinton revert to when being confronted with unflattering evidence. I like to call this the Clinton lie ratchet. So, let's put aside Hillary's health problems for a moment in order to observe how the Clinton lie ratchet worked on the previous scandal, which was the issue of her private email server. Now, in the summer of 2014, investigators on the previous, previous scandal, that would be Benghazi, discovered that then-Secretary of State Hillary Clinton was using a private, unsecure server to send government emails, some of which may have been classified. Now, once Hillary realized that there was actual evidence of wrongdoing, something, you know, tangible, not something that can be just blamed on conspiracy kooks or the deplorable and vast right-wing conspiracy, then the ratchet kicks in by telling a lie, which is the least damaging lie possible. Now, regarding the email scandal, the least damaging first lie uttered by Hillary Clinton herself is that, yes, she did have a private server, but only for the convenience of having a single portable device for both business and personal email. All of her work-related emails had been turned over, she said, so the ratchet locks the damage to a little bit of poor judgment, and now it's old news, case closed, let's move on. But we discovered that contrary to the least damaging lie that she told us in the beginning, there were in fact work-related emails on the server that she did not turn in. Now faced with more actual evidence, the ratchet slips one notch, and now we lock into the second least damaging lie, which is, okay, well, not everything was turned in, but no harm was done because none of the work-related emails that she neglected to turn in were classified. By the way, a press corps not dedicated to suppressing news would have realized, just as we right-wing nutjobs did, that the simple admission that she did not turn in all of her work-related documents, for whatever reason, was an open admission that she was in violation of U.S. Code Title 18, Part 1, Chapter 101, Section 2071, Paragraph A, which, in fact, is a felony. And, of course, if you're running for president, a felony looks pretty bad on the resume. Then we discover that classified, secret, top secret, and above top secret emails were in fact stored on her private server, disproving the second lie. So now the ratchet proceeds to the third least damaging lie, which is, okay, they may have been secret, but they were not secret at the time that she received them. When this is revealed to be a lie, the Clinton lie ratchet moves to the fourth least damaging lie. Okay, they may have been secret at the time she received them, but they weren't marked secret, so she just didn't know that they were secret. Now, you might wonder why a person trusted with the most sensitive, guarded, and potentially damaging information in the entire government of the world's most powerful nation, when unsure of whether something of obvious importance was secret or not, you would think that somebody like that would err on the side of caution and, you know, ask. Well, when we then discover that many of the emails were in fact marked C for confidential, well then the fifth least damaging lie to be trotted out becomes so desperate as to become an open farce. Hillary Clinton thought that the C stood for a paragraph heading. None of the other paragraph headings were marked A or B or D or even E for effort at this point. When the utter ridiculousness of the fifth least damaging lie is revealed, then the Clinton lie ratchet moved to the final tooth the sixth least damaging lie, which was this. Yes, they were marked classified, but in 2012, Hillary Clinton fell to the ground and hit her head so hard that she forgot the briefings and the protocols on how to handle top secret information. This last least damaging lie is in fact so damaging the candidate for president of the United States hit her head so hard that she forgot how to handle classified information along with God knows what else got knocked out of her head. That you have to just wonder why someone would revert to a lie that damning and damaging in the first place. And the answer is that this appalling statement is still not as bad as the actual, you know, truth. And the truth, we know it's the truth, because she's been forced to admit it, one click of the ratchet at a time is this. No, she did in fact keep government emails on her private server. 
She did fail to turn in tens of thousands of work-related emails. Hundreds of these emails were classified as secret, top secret, and above top secret, and she knew full well that they were classified when she read them. And now, we discover that the reason she gave for all of this deception and lying in the first place, that she wanted the convenience of a single handheld device, was the most damning lie of all, because Hillary Clinton had at least 13 mobile devices, all with top secret information on them, and none of which were turned over to the FBI for their investigation. The Clinton camp tells us that one of the requested laptops and a thumb drive, I'm not making this up, was sent to the FBI and somehow got lost in the mail. So what happened to those 13 missing Blackberries with the top secret information? Her dog ate them. And that last ridiculous claim is the only statement in this absurd, blatantly obvious goat rodeo of contempt, corruption, and felonious misconduct that they did not, in fact, ask you to believe. Likely, they're saving the dog story for the Clinton health scandal, which is unfolding using the exact same Clinton lie ratchet and which we're going to deal with in the next fire. We need your help to keep these messages coming. If you want to help us make a difference, please go to BillWhittle.com and become a member.